Hello, my friends. I am Rob, the Dungeon Tutor. Sometimes I'm this eye. And I have been back at it with Kickstarters. But this one is a little bit different. This one was the opening of a door for me. Uh, when I first heard about this particular Kickstarter, I didn't know any better. It seemed kind of a strange duck out of all the different Kickstarters that I met. Because it was advertising a series of adventures that yet hadn't been printed, but it was based on a series that was already starting to be in print for a, for a whole series. And all kinds of things that this group wanted to do, building their own world, and there's a lot of really ambitious stuff without a lot of tried and true names behind it. And I'd never heard of a group called Gooey Cube before. It seemed like something really ridiculous. Still sounds a little ridiculous when I say it out loud, but still. Um, so I, I ran across Gooey Cube through Kickstarter, and on social media, I first thought, well, this looks odd, but interesting, and I first met the founder of Gooey Cube, Alphidius Goo. Uh, many months later, almost a year now, um, yeah, it's probably been about a full year now, um, I have written an adventure for Gooey Cube, which has been published. Awesome. And I've contributed, and I've become a part of their community, and entertained everybody, and they, in return, a lot of their people find out that some of my content is useful. They've become subscribers to my channels, which I love, and uh, a lot of those people are really high-quality folk who, uh, you know, have good questions and, and uh, needs that I can try to help with, and are, you know, just great folks. So I did back the Kickstarter, and in the nature of Kickstarters, you back it, and then you wait for them to make the product, and then ship it. So, also in the nature of Kickstarters, aiming that timing down is hard. So they are a little bit late, but nothing that's egregious. They certainly are not far on the uh, the, the list of the real scum waffles on you know, Kickstarter, who are years and years and years and years in arrears. No, they're they're just a little bit late because they're packing so much stuff into things. They can't say no. And so as a result, the people who ordered the things are getting more value for what they ordered. I truly believe they, they just can't stop themselves from making their stuff better. Sometimes I worry that it's at their own cost, but still... So I just wanted to highlight some of the miscellaneous things I got in the second wave of things from Gooey Cube and their Kickstarter. Now it was a gold level backer, which entitled me to a couple of a couple of neat things along the way, and also a couple of things that I saw that they were offering that I had to get myself. So we'll start off first of all with the GMing die. This is a ten-sided die, and it's in the Gooey Cube kind of translucent green with bubbles, kind of like a to lighten this cube a little bit, a little bit, and it is numbered from negative five on up to positive five. Well, actually, it's not. The values are on one one rotation: minus one, minus four, plus two, minus five, plus three. On the opposite side, plus one, plus four, minus two, minus three, and the gooey cube symbol. Which is... I'm not certain, entirely certain what they, what they intended to happen when you roll a gooey cube. I'm just assuming it's something wacky and wonderful. Kind of like a critical. But uh, I'll have to ask Alphineas about that. I'm sure if I totaled up the values and everything, I don't think there's a zero place, for instance. So maybe that would be representative of zero. But they go from positive four to negative five. So, you know, it makes things a little bit more challenging on the average, but sometimes you can get a benefit to it. The purpose for that, though, is so that when the players are trying to do something and they're like, okay, I'm gonna roll, and I got to add this, I got a 14, I succeed. Life isn't so cut and dry. Sometimes getting a, a particular number you might think is good enough. But sometimes there are just circumstances that come up that make it more challenging. This adds a level of uncertainty to difficulties. This is to be applied to a difficulty uh, check, the total that they're, uh, the players are trying to shoot for, 
to, again, make it a little more uncertain. Sometimes they'll find their job was a lot easier than they thought. Sometimes it'll be more challenging. You don't know. I wouldn't say it's something that you should use all the time, but on circumstances where the probably not when the circumstances are such that the characters would have advantage or disadvantage clear cut, but just a little odd, a little uncertain. That's really what it represents is uncertainty. <clears throat> now, the gooey cube dice. I love dice. Anybody who knows me knows that. It's almost a redundant thing. It's like saying fish swim or, you know, birds, well, sing. Some of them don't, but... So, uh, these were made by uh, Roll for Initiative, who are friends of Gooey Cube. And just to look at the inset paper, uh, this dice set features Roll for Initiatives, Balance D20. A better designed die that every that evenly distributes the numbers so that all groups of five adjacent faces always add up to 52 or 53. So that's challenging. It's an interesting distribution. So yes, the 20 sided die, it's green, it's sparkly. And in the inside of this, it has just kind of, you know, it's like a gelatinous cube. You can kind of see through it. It's translucent. The sparkles are kind of neat. Um, and the 20-sided face. The font, of course, is very similar to, um, you know, what you, what you would find with a lot of other dice. But the 20 side die, it's a little gooey cube. Yes, they love their gooey cube. And it is the, the 20 sided die of this die. And. Oh, just get it on. 12, the 12 sided die is your classic 12 sided die. Similar numbering than what you'd find from Chessex or Kaplow or, or any of those. But with, again, this translucent green and sparkly and a 10 sided die again same thing they almost look like they should be squishy don't they mm -hmm. they really did nail the look and then they have what uh, my group calls a dummy die which is a 10 sided die that is in tens digits so you know instantly which die is your tens digit you don't have to call which color it is every time you roll so that's cool. We have an eight-sided die. Again, classic uh, classic numbering system. Looks really nice. And then we have the six-sided die. Now this one is funny because in the inside of this, there's a little skull that's looking out. <laughs> And it's the cube, so that's appropriate. On the six-sided die facing, there is the gooey cube symbol, too, which is, partially obscures the skull inside, but it's a nice touch. I generally don't like seeing things inside of my dice because I have a feeling it throws the balance off a little bit, but with the broad, flat planes of a D6, that's not going to matter at all. And I suspect that the density of the plastic of the skull is going to be close enough to the die that it's not going to throw it off a bit. And, uh... Yeah, that should be fun. This is the coolest thing, though. I don't know if this is trademarked by Roll for Initiative, but the uh, the four-sided die is what they call an arch D4. It is. It has two rounded ends, so it's not a cube at all, and it's got four facings that it can roll: one, two, three, and four. This way, you don't have the caltropy problem of being of having a, a, a murder thing to step on. Ugh done that enough times that I'm glad that they invented a way to not have to worry about that. And the inside's got a little not completely clear, some swirls and stuff, which is actually makes it look a little bit more like a gooey, like a gelatinous cube. Well, now it is a gelatinous arch thing. 
So this really cool design, excellent element. This reminds me of the crystal cast uh, prisms uh, dice that they used to make, which was, and I, again, I thought it was a pretty ideal solution. The problem was when you get to the higher values of those, the dice would just roll and roll and roll and roll and roll as the facets weren't sharp enough to, to really catch and stick. Then we have the Contributors Collection 1 of Special Item Cards. Now, if you've seen any of the things that I've done uh, showing off GUI Cube products, you know that for their adventures, they have uh, actual cards to show off to the players when they get a magical item or uh, even a special item. There, uh, there comes a card that the Game Master can give to the player to demonstrate that the character has that item. It has a description of the item itself, so the players can reference it as they need to, and it's just a really nice resource for the players to fall back on. Now, Wizards has made some like this for the basic Dungeons & Dragons items. I look forward to seeing what Gooey Cube did with their spin on these items, though. And there's a small little deck of them. So for this, we're definitely going to need the glasses. So we have... I'm not going to go over their powers. I'm just going to show off the items. Bracers of Accuracy. And, yeah, they have the effects, and they have a little description of what the item does. That's pretty awesome. Now, these came about, if I remember right, when they were courting the uh, the contributors, which many of us who are in the uh, Glee Cube Den of Enlightenment on Facebook, uh, we can go to their Discord and get a link and offer up submissions periodically that they can then use. And I think these were taken from that, which is cool. And in the back, they credit the artist, because Gooey Cube is all about being fair to their artists, which I like. I've known far too many artists who've been posed by the people that uh, paid them for what they were doing for them. So, Dragon Scorched Armor. Very nice. Dwarf and Plate. Footman's Shield. The Grim Fist Buckler. And these are these are unique items. The ones that you are not going to find in the player's handbook, that's for sure. Halfling's Foot Pad Armor. Helm of the Restless Dead. Now that looks eerie. That's creepy. I like it though. Gooey Cube's Zayathe is tinged towards horror, so some of these may be a little dark. Ogre Buckler plus one. Seric Iron Plate Armor. Seric Iron is a special metal requiring great skill to craft that uh, provides enhanced uh, effects over common iron. Tribal Shield of Reflection. Wand of Confusion. And so on and so on. This could get a bit long if I show off everything. It's a nice... Nice little value, and I don't believe I had to pay anything extra for this. This just came from backing the Kickstarter at the gold level. So, really cool stuff. The last thing I'm going to do is show you uh, the item that basically is the reason why it took a little while for these to come out, because they really wanted to finish these and ship them. This is the deck of Perilous Fortuity. And in that... Uh, it is a deck that is found actually in the world of Zayathe. And this isn't to be confused with a, say, a deck of many things, although you might be able to use it for that. In fact, I'm really thinking about coming up with a such a deck and contributing it to Alphineas. But I don't know if that such a thing is something he'd be excited about. We'll see. Sometimes he humors me in my little ideas. I always have the, the, the fear, though, when I present something, he's going to go, Rob, 
after the Kickstarter. <laughs> So he always tells me. It's a great idea, but after the Kickstarter. We have to finish the Kickstarter first. Uh, GooeyCube.com slash games. This webpage has all the games that have been made and will contain all the games that are yet to be made for the deck of Perilous Fortuity. Please check it out and all the interesting and fun spirited contests and games of chance that you can enjoy with this most fantastical set of playing cards. You can even submit a game for consideration if you want. All the details of how that works are on the page. May all your adventures be sticky. Alphineas Goo. But, I have seen the art for this, and I know that it's amazing. And I have certainly been looking forward to getting this myself. Now, they had two different art forms for it. This, I believe, is considered the antiqued version, which I think was going to be an exclusive for the Kickstarter. I could be wrong. I may have to double-check on that. I wanted both sets, but I don't know. So, all right, and they get a QR code scan to, to link up to them. And this marvelous deck is the most popular set of playing cards in the world of Zayathe. It is used for many games of chance and may be found in the courts of kings and queens, the pockets of charlatans and soothsayers, as well as in the gambling halls, taverns, gaming rooms, and perhaps even the backpacks of adventurers. We so hope it brings much enjoyment to your gaming table. May the fortune of Kismia be with you, and by jinx, may no tricks be played. From Phineas. So, this is the kind of art that you get with these cards. And I don't even know how to, how to call each of these. I was kind of hoping there would be a key, and it must be on the website, but uh, the A... The B. The J? Myron the Ugly, ugly Troll. He's a character in Gooey Cube. Um, just such art. How do you compete with this? I mean, their portrait art, their artists that they get are amazing absolutely incredible so just looking at this it's you know just outstanding now I know there are the four suits based on the elements there's stone and water and fire and I believe air but yeah these are just Amazing portraits. And after you get the face cards out of the way, then come the you know the playing cards. The smallest one is the nib of the different elements, I believe. And then you got the deuce. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Little puffs of air. And then it moves on to the next set of Face cards. So, and it just goes on and on. the The art is is incredible. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, and there's a dragon. Up there. And then you get water. You get the all the way up nibs through tens. And again, just the art is so much fun and how they all connect this though the art that they have for these I believe for the most part none of these are contributor art you know you aren't going to find the people of the gooey cube community in this deck so uh, it's it's really cool um, I don't know any of the games yet I wanted to get hands on with it first but now that I have it, I am looking forward to seeing what this particular resource could really mean. And even now I'm plotting exactly what I can do with this in a game. Besides, you know, a game that people can play when they're inside a tavern, sure. But there's going to be enchanted decks. You know there's going to be enchanted decks. So maybe it's up to somebody like me, who has written for Gooey Cube already, to come up with something exciting if they don't already have it, which is possible.
But we shall see. So, folks, my friends, that's what I got from Gooey Cube. This is on top of, of course, of their Kickstarter. I already had received uh, the Encyclopedia's Iathica 1, The Weirded World, and the first three parts of the Red Star Rising campaign, The Darkest Dream, The Follows the Spirits, The Coldest of Blood. So yeah, I'm in the goo, and <laughs> what can I say? But uh, some very cool stuff. Um, yeah, it's just kind of breathtaking, all the stuff that's come with it. So, very happy, excited, and uh, can't wait to do even more with Gooey Cube and show you more cool things as it comes out. So, until that time, though, my friends, I will see you the next time I get in front of this camera and make another video for you. Until that time, farewell.